Hi all, uh, this is the video for distance vector routing which we had handled in the previous class. <clears throat> now, uh, in the last uh, video we had discussed on Dijkstra's algorithm and we had also discussed about uh, the various uh, um, differences between the link state routing protocol and uh, distance vector routing protocol. So the algorithm which is used for distance vector routing protocol is bellman ford algorithm, which we are going to discuss. Now, this is the aim which is which would you, which you would find in your syllabus. So write a program for distance vector algorithm to find suitable suitable path for transmission. Okay. Now let us. Uh, so if you have understood Dijkstra's algorithm, I don't think this would be difficult for you. So uh, you have to almost follow the same technique. So now uh, I'm not going into details about the theory. We have already discussed about the theory about what is DVR, what are the problems in DVR, that is the count to infinity problems and so on. Okay, now let us uh, focus on this example for now. So this is almost the same example which we have taken in Dijkstra's algorithm also. Okay, so these uh, are the connections between the nodes and we have five nodes and this is the, um, weight or cost or distance between the nodes. So what do we do first? We do, uh, write the initial cost and path matrix for Dijkstra's algorithm. But here for uh, distance vector routing, we write next half algorithm. So what is the next node for the connection from the source to destination? Okay, for the connection between source and destination, what is the next node? Okay, so same thing as next half. So let us see how do we start. So cost matrix, there are no changes. It is the same as how we wrote in Dijkstra's algorithm. So you have to write the cost matrix based on the node diagram that we have. Okay, now um, now we will uh, see the uh, initial cost and next hop matrix. So what is this next hop matrix? So in Dijkstra's algorithm, you would have seen there is something called there was something called as path matrix, which was initially assigned to all zeros because we were writing the direct path values, sorry, direct yeah direct cost values between the two uh, source and destinations here in cost matrix, and uh, since there was no via path for a direct path, uh, the via paths in path matrix was all zeros. That means all the k values were zero initially. But here in the distance vector routing, we don't write the path matrix, we write next half matrix. So what is the next half when you move from source i to destination j? So assuming this, the row numbers as source and the column numbers as destination j, so if you move from one to one, so one, one second. So one to one, when you are moving, like, one like there is no one to one path but what is the destination what is the next hop one itself so when you're moving from one to two what is the next hop so one to two the next hop is two like that so the destination itself becomes the next hop so whatever we are writing here in the initial next hop matrix is nothing but j okay so if we name next hop matrix to be next hop of because next underscore hop of i j okay it's like this if you initialize it so initializing would be next top of i j is equal to j in dijkstra's algorithm we had something called as p of i j for path matrix so p of i j was equal to zero uh, for initialization right so here it would be next top of i j is equal to j because j the destination itself becomes the next top in the initial condition Okay, so there is no changes in cost matrix. It's the same as what we had done in Dijkstra's algorithm. We are just writing the direct paths. And as I said, the diagonal elements would anyway be zero because it is node to node, same nodes. So distance between same node, nothing, no cost. So it is zero. And all these are direct values. So as we saw, two to four, there is no direct path. Hence the uh, theoretical value would be infinity. So since we can't type infinity in our code, here so we enter a higher cost value compared to any of these cost values you can enter any higher values okay fine so here we have chosen just 100 you can take any higher values similarly here here and here okay so this is the cost matrix and this is the next hop matrix clear 
So next, let us move on. In the same way how we move, moved in Dijkstra's algorithm, we have to uh, see uh, what happens in each loop of k, y a path k. So since we have five nodes, again, we will be moving from k equal to one to five. So this is the algorithm which we have seen in Dijkstra's algorithm. So how do we replace this cost value? So if we have a lesser cost value compared to the previous cost value, then the cost uh, metrics would be changed. So if the previous cost value, suppose we are taking the example from two to two to four. So I use two and J is four. What is the cost value now? So it is hundred, right? So it is hundred. So cost of IJ is hundred. So if this cost of IJ is greater than, now consider the via path K is equal to one, okay? So if cost of IK, so IK becomes two, one. So if cost of two, one, what is cost of two, one? One, right? Plus cost of, what is this? Two, four, right? So we're assuming uh, two to four. So it's two and destination four. So what is uh, two to four? Sorry, sorry, one to four. Sorry, one to four, right? K is one, right? So uh, one to four. So what is uh, one to four? One to four is um, three, right? So what is one plus uh, three? That is four. So total value becomes four. So obviously hundred is greater than four. So if this condition is satisfied, do what? Replace the new cost value with what? You are assigning cost of IJ, cost of two four with cost of IK plus cost of KJ, that is four. So four will be assigned to this position. And correspondingly, the next half matrix will be assigned with K. So it was previously J, right? So J is the initialization. As per the algorithm, it would be replaced with K. That is the new via path would be one instead of whatever it was earlier, clear? So this is the same algorithm which we follow. Okay, so only thing is in distance vector routing, the nodes will not know about every other node. Broadcasting doesn't happen, right? So every node will have only the routing table corresponding to itself and its immediate neighbors. Okay, so the routing table would have the source node i and suppose we are considering i equal to 2. Okay, so for 2, uh, source node 2, uh, 2 to 1, if 1 is the destination, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5. So for these neighbors of 2, what is the cost? Okay. What is the cost, corresponding cost? Okay, so that is what will be there in the routing table. So for source node 2, what will be the, for these destinations, what will be the cost? And uh, what will be the uh, next hop? Okay, so that cost will be obtained from cost matrix, next hop will be obtained from next hop matrix. So like this would be one routing table, understood? Okay, so next let us move on. So for now let us start from, so as I said, the loop starts for k equal to, uh, for k equal to one till k less than or equal to five and k plus plus. So this is the outermost loop, right? And then inside that we have for i, right? For i and then inside that we have for uh, j, right? So for i equal to one to five, similarly for j equal to one to five, like that. So for k equal to one, we are traversing all the i's and j's like this inside the metric. So this is only i and j. So this is i and j like that. So it can be the other way also, it can be replaced. So this can be two to one like that also, okay? Fine. So cost matrix, I don't think I have to explain because it is the same as Dijkstra's algorithm. So the change happens as per this algorithm. So if the new path, so we have followed via path one, so two to four, there was no direct path. So, and as I said, if we follow via path one, the row and column corresponding to one will not change. So I've put a box across the row and column corresponding to one, so showing that it will not change. Okay. Now, so let us see where the changes are happening. So here, so this one suffix I've put because the via path is one. Okay, so anyway, it, was, it is shown. Now, so two to four, the previous value was 100, right? We saw. Now, as per this protocol here, it is changed to four. Okay, and correspondingly, the K value is also changed to one. So whatever it was, 
the next stop was destinations, right? Earlier. So now that has changed the K value, K, the new K value. Similarly, 2 to 5, we had no direct path, it was 100. Now via 1, if you move, the path followed is this. So the new cost value becomes 20 plus 1, that is 21. And the via path K equal to 1 is replaced in this position. Okay, so next stop of IJ is updated here with the new K value, correct? So as per the algorithm, next stop of IJ is updated with the new K value, right? Here, okay. Now, so similarly, three to four, three to four, the previous uh, value was 100, okay? So now, if you follow the via path, uh, one second. If you follow the via path one, three to four, what is the new uh, cost value? It is 10 plus three, that is 13. So 13, similarly, four to three will also be 13. And you can see the K value is also changed here. Okay, like that. So the same thing is followed for k equal to 2. And as I said, I've drawn a box to show that the row and column corresponding to 2 will not change. Okay, so, I, so just see this matrix and then do it by yourself and then cross check your answers with these matrices. Okay, so it's the same thing which we followed in Dijkstra's algorithm. Like that, we'll move from k equal to 3 and then k equal to 4. So when you do it by yourself, those who are watching this video, you just pause this video and then do it by yourself and then cross check your answers and see if you're getting these matrices for the respective K values. And then the last loop would be K equal to five, correct? So these are the changes, so here, right? So three to four, the previous value was via two. Okay, so three to four, the previous path was this, right? So, which had a cost of 2 plus 1 plus 3, that is 5 plus 1, 6. You can see 6 here in the previous uh, value, right? So, now if you follow for via path 5, you can get a new good path. Good path in the sense the cost is less, 4 plus 5, 4 plus 1, 5. So, 5 is lesser than 6, hence it is replaced with 5. And the K value is also changed in the next stop metric. So, this is the cost and final cost and next, next stop metrics because we have only 5 nodes, clear? So now let us move on to coding. So that I will be dealing in the next video. So here we'll stop here. So watch the next part of this distance vector routing for the code. Okay, thank you.